Hey guys, this is Daniela with Seeker for Christ. Today I have a very special guest. She is my beloved sister. Her name is Bree Marie Atkins, and she is going to be sharing her testimony today. Welcome, Marie. Or, uh, Bree. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm happy to be here. I'm excited because I know so many people probably have questions um, and want to know more about like testimonies from people who were in the New Age. And I know that you have pretty quite a story to share so i'm really excited so i wanted to start off with this first i want to ask you a little bit about your background your upbringing like what belief systems did you have as a child and um kind of jump into that first yeah so uh, whenever i was growing up i did not really believe in anything my mom never really raised me to uh believe in god uh be believe in any god believe in jesus or anything like that um so i kind of just was very curious trying to figure out like what created me like i all that was always a huge question of mine is like okay i'm in this life how was i born who created me why that was always thoughts that went through my head but no one could give me an answer um there there were moments where i did go to church and i thought that it was interesting and i thought that it was cool but it was never something that was a habitual every Sunday type thing. Um, yeah, I don't think my mom was raised in it either. So honestly, Christ just came to me, obviously on his own and found me. And um, it honestly had to do with a lot of me just, just stumbling in different avenues and none of it was truth. And I just kept searching for truth. Like I, I always had that, um that drive to know i i've always wanted to know and i didn't think that we were just here to to live i thought that there was something else like i had such a purpose inside me and i was like what's this purpose like what is this <laughs> so um yeah and and i christ came in multiple different times inside of my life but i always turned it down i was not a fan of jesus at all um, I ran his name through the dirt mul multiple times um, before Christ. And anybody who talked to me about Jesus, I was just like, no, I don't want anything to do with Jesus. Uh, that is a program belief, like you're being controlled by, by the world. Um, and I honestly felt like people who, who chose to believe in something or believe in Jesus uh, was because they couldn't do their life on their own. And it's funny because where I'm at now, <laughs> I completely believe that and understand like, yeah, I can't, like I need a savior. <laughs> so true. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this, because I, I love that you just, you just brought that up. And you know, a lot of us are seeking for truth and that's why we explore in so many different avenues, different pathways um until we kind of feel like we found it and even even when we're searching it's like it seems to be almost like this rabbit hole of, of, of things that we're trying to get to the to, to the end of but it doesn't seem like we get there so like for you when you're on your walk and stuff um what avenues did you walk down like what interests you as you were growing up like yeah um stuff like that so so yeah i've i've I was really into witchcraft whenever I was younger. Um, this is whenever I was maybe like, I would say like seven or eight. I was really in love with like Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I was like, whoa, like we can do spells. Yeah, I was like, we can do spells to like cast things to happen in the world. Like I wanna be able to do that type of stuff. And I actually started looking up online at like spells to cast in the world. And it was just like silly spells, like, how can I change my eye color? <laughs> like, how can I make this boy love me? And, and it was like really weird stuff like that. So it was, I really got into witchcraft whenever I was younger. This is even before I was in deep in new age. Right. Um, but whenever I, so it was maybe 2012, 2011, 2012 timeframe. I, I knew that there was something deeper to life. I was uh, digging into psychedelics and I was doing shrooms like all the time. And right before this, I was agnostic, but I didn't 
I wasn't sure what I believed. As soon as I did shrooms, I was like, okay, something is out here, but I don't know what it is. Um, and then by the end of 2012, I got out of my first relationship. And during this relationship, I wanted to commit suicide. And yeah, so I basically am crying on the ground, like scratching at my face. Like I had like streams of blood coming down my face um, because I wanted to be out of my body. I did not want to be living at all. And I didn't know what created me. And I remember screaming out saying like, if you don't take me, I'm taking myself. And it was a really like, it was a very crazy time period in my life. Um, and I didn't know what I was saying. I was just in this surrender mode of like, I need something bigger and I need you to take me. But it wasn't like, I, I didn't feel like I needed him to save me. It was like, I literally wanted to die. Like I did not want to be on the planet anymore. And I was bawling my eyes out in front of the mirror and I begin seeing my eyes for the first time, like just really just taking a just deeper look inside my eyes and realizing like, wow, I am a soul inside of a body. And I started having these thoughts. Like one thought was like, do it, do it. The other thought was don't do it. And I started recognizing, oh, I'm in control of my thoughts. I get to choose what I get to think and what path I just decide to go down. Right. And whenever I clicked that into my brain, something happened with my eyes and with this euphoric power that took, took hold of me. I, I didn't know that it was Jesus, but now I know that it was Jesus that literally cradled me into a blanket and basically said, like, you don't have to do this. Like, I've got you. I love you. You are my child. And it was such an overwhelming feeling that I was like, what is this feeling? From, from staring at my eyes and going from tears of sadness, I went to tears of happiness automatically and everything was okay. I didn't want to commit suicide anymore. But from all those thoughts that were going through my brain, I was like, oh, I get to choose, which led me to searching on Google. I did a Google search of what are thoughts, which led me to the University of Metaphysics. And I was learning about meditation, um, transcendental meditation, astral projection, um, third eye, uh, how to control your thoughts, how to control other people's thoughts, uh, just spells in general, witchcraft, uh, demonic entities, like just really deep into that whole world. But it wasn't it wasn't even demonic entities that I was learning about. It was uh, aliens. Like I was learning about UFOs, extraterrestrials, all that. And I was like, oh, I can actually tap into these aliens and talk to them. And that's what I would do, like, all the time. Like, I was doing uh, spirit guide rituals and uh, just, just you know, the pendulum thing? Yeah, I was doing that all the time, too. Like, trying to figure out, like, what they wanted me to do next and anything that it would go to. I was just like, all right, like, that, that's the next part of my journey. And so I was listening to these spirits and uh, these these alien beings, uh, fallen angels that I call them now, but um, I was listening to all of them direct my path, and I started asking for, I wanted more. I was like, okay, I know you guys are out here, but I want more. Like, I want to see planets. I want to go here, and then it led me to this guy all the way out in California. I was in Massachusetts at the time. Uh, but he wrote me on Facebook and he was like, do you know that you're not from this planet? And I was like, what do you mean? Because this, <laughs> this is everything that I want to know about. And uh, he was like, yeah, you're actually a dragon priestess from planet Antara and you are from the stars. And I was like, whoa, cool. Like, that's really cool. I want to hear more about this. And so he bought my plane ticket out to California just so he could download me with information about uh, where we came from and how our planet exploded and how we've been reincarnating on the earth for 40,000 years. And 
and basically that there were seven of us. <laughs> it's, it's even funny to talk about because I'm just like, I can't believe I used to be in this. But there were, there were seven of us in a tribe uh, at this house. And we all came from the same planet. Sorry about the dog, if you hear him. <laughs> um, hold on. Is it really loud on your end? No, I mean, I can hear him, but it's fine. It's, it's no problem. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So these, these seven people that I lived with basically thought that they were all a part of this planet, that we all got sent here, and we were the highest beings on the planet, and we were supposed to wake everybody else up. And so we're going places and we're trying to wake these people up and we'd go to grocery stores and I remember the, the people that I lived with, they would just point at people and just be like, they're not awake, they're not awake, they're not awake, we need to go wake them up because they're stuck in their, their world and they don't know how to get out. We need to bring them to our planet. And so we'd, we'd go places and just try and like wake these people up out of their bodies. It was the weirdest thing ever. Um, but yeah, was this like actual like you going to like grocery stores in the physical flesh and talking to individuals like that? Oh yeah, yeah, it was it was completely physical. <laughs> yeah, in in the present world that happened. Um, but there were multiple times where even in dream world, um, we started like tapping into each other's dreams, and we thought that we could. I don't know, it was like we would be dreaming of the same dream at the same time and we'd be able to write down the same thing that would happen and we'd talk about it in real life together and then we started believing that this dream world was more real than this world. Mm. Uh, so we got very confused, we started doing psychedelics, DMT, uh, smoking a lot of marijuana all the time and it would help, not help me, but it would basically bring up um more spirits around and we would literally let these spirits invade our body we would let these spirits invade our body and help them uh we thought that we were healing them by giving them our light because we were the most powerful beings on the planet so we thought that if they came through us they would be able to be relieved and sent to the garden they called it the garden which is very fascinating to think about um but this garden place is in sense reference with heaven they they would talk about and yeah and that's basically what we did all the time they would also do a lot of like blood rituals on uh on the land that we lived on with like their menstrual blood and all that yeah. Um, because they thought that their blood was very nutritional and if you gave it to the earth it would heal the earth and it would heal other people so it was it was some very fascinating world that I was in that's for sure wow this is <laughs> I'm just like absorbing everything you're saying yeah. <laughs> I, I, I honestly relate to what you're saying too um, because at, at one point I also believed I was from the planet Pleiades. I thought I was a Pleiadian slash Andromedan. And, yeah. you know, we all had these moments where we're trying to find our identity. And we're, we're, we're coming across, you know, so much of this content, this hidden knowledge. And it fascinates us. And so therefore we try to identify and find our identity in things that we are coming across. So, yeah. you know, it makes a lot of sense, like, you know, when you come across that. And at that time, it felt like there was some level of truth and that, you know, this couldn't, you know, this is supernatural. There has to be some sort of fact to it. But the thing is, is that like, first of all, aliens, we all know, and I, and I think we come to know it when we come to Christ, right? That they truly are fallen angels, yeah. demons. Um, so, you know, the information that you're receiving could actually be them telling you who they are. I mean, it sounds a little crazy, but there could be some facts to what they're saying in regards to them being the demonic fallen beings that you're connected yeah, to. For sure. Um, but I also see it in a sense that, you know, not everything that they're probably sharing with you is factual, and it could definitely be just to control you and have some sort of influence in your life. So I totally uh, kind of get that. So those viewers who are watching, if you guys have these encounters with aliens, um, 
you know, it's been programmed for, for many, many years, um, television shows about even cartoons of little kids interested in connecting with aliens. That's what caught me very mm -hmm. interested too. Um, you know, you gotta be careful because that isn't, uh, they're not, they're not benevolent beings that you connect with. They're actually fallen angels. They're demonic. Mm -hmm. Bring that out. And they manip manipulate your brain to make it seem like they're good because that, that's what it was for me. It's like, here's all the information you could ever want. And I'm like, okay, like I'm going to, I'm going to feed on this. And then as I did, I was getting so much information, but it wasn't leading me anywhere. I was like, where is this taking me? Like I was so lost in my brain and getting tangled and, and it was just, it was a mess. So that's why I'm, I'm just so blessed. <laughs> I'm so blessed that Jesus pulled me out of all that because it was never ending. I was on conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. And I was like, okay, like there's gotta be something else. Like there's gotta be something that will give me peace. None of this is giving me peace. I just feel unsatisfied even when I feel like I'm eating so much. None of it was satisfying me. I had to look for more. And with Jesus, I've become so satisfied where I literally do not have to search for anything because it's right here. So I'm, I'm with it day and night, all day. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, okay, let's talk about that. And tell me a bit more um, where you really felt like your life was just turning around and you were really devoting your life to Christ. What, like, what was that moment for you? What did you have to go through to get to that point where you're like, you know what? I'm all yours. I'm submitted completely. Yeah. So it was 2016 and <laughs> I had actually stumbled across some flat earth videos. <laughs> uh, it was 2016, stumbled across those videos and I was just like, uh, I was telling myself like, oh, well, you're so open-minded. You might as well just just look into this and see if it's true. And as I looked into it, there were Bible verses with some of the flat earth content. And I was like, what? Like, I'm confused. Like, why are they bringing Jesus into flat earth? Like, this is totally different spectrum. And as the Bible verses started, as I started reading all the Bible verses, I was just like, whoa, like this actually makes a lot of sense. Maybe the Bible is true. First time I ever opened the Bible. That's something that's really cool is Jesus will meet you where you're at. And that's what he did for me is he met me right at conspiracy theories and flat earth and all that. Um, but so I still wasn't sure if it was like super true, but I was trying to understand the Bible and I was like, none of this makes sense. I don't get it. I was still very deep into like astrology and all that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the guy I was on the phone with and I was telling him about his birth chart and how like, I don't know, I was just reading his whole thing to him. And he was like, listen, I know this may sound right, but it's not. Jesus is the way. And I was like, no, 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 like astrology is the way. Like, I think the Bible kind of just like is astrology and we need to read it through astrological lenses. And he was like, no, that's not what it is. And so we had a four hour in-depth conversation about Jesus, which totally just blew my mind out of the water. And I was like, okay, you're right. Like maybe Jesus is real. But that whole first year of me just like surrendering my life to him was really, really hard. Um, because the demons were attacking me like heavily. Um, all the things that I had done were finally catching up whenever Jesus was breaking that chain. Um, because it, it was, it was really wild. Like a lot of people say when they come to Jesus, it was like automatically amazing. Uh, for me, I knew that Jesus was amazing and he was pulling me out of stuff, but it was very hard for me to let go of things because I was hearing whispers and spirits say like, no, you've got to fulfill your mission for your planet. You've got to do this and you've got to do this. And why are you just letting all of this go? And, and they were like real entities coming to me, like not my voices. Like I was seeing these things and, and yeah, it was, it was very hard for me. There was even one time, um, I was in a prayer group 
and uh, just on my phone and we were all texting back and forth and I was like, hey, like I think something is happening uh, within my body, like something is taking over and I don't know what it is and um, I need help. Like, can you please pray over me? All of them started praying over me. This is, this is in a text group. They were just sending prayers. And immediately I fell to the ground and started having a, a seizure, like some type of blackout seizure. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but my head was banging on the door. And um, I'm, I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen and I was doing the dishes right before all this happened. So I sent the text doing the dishes. I end up on the ground and I end up waking up and my finger is bleeding because I guess the glass had cut my finger. And I was just like, what just happened? Like, I feel like the spirits were really trying to keep me with them while Jesus was like breaking it off of me. Um, so it was very hard for me in the beginning, but I knew that it was the right way. Like I knew that something was happening that I was like, okay, I need to continue with him because this is the only truth that makes sense right now. And everything with like synchronicities, uh, I, you know about synchronicities back then, right? So synchronicities used to line up for me all the time, like very... If I wanted something, it would be there. If I thought about something, it was right there. And I say this in one of my videos, but I literally felt like I was, I hate to say this, but I literally felt like I was Satan's daughter at one point. And I listened to him very directly and knew, knew him by all of his words and all his lies. And I continued to feed on them. And as I fed on them, I would ask him for whatever, and he gave it to me. And that is really scary to think about now. But yeah, anything that I wanted was right there. And so, yeah, like I said, all the synchronicities were happening over and over and over again. Anything I wanted, it was there. Um, when I was with Jesus, all of that sort of stopped. He was like, all right, you're going to need to work yourself to get out of this, but I'm working through you and I'm giving you my strength to fight this battle. And I was like, okay, like I'm, I'm moving, but like anything that I wanted and I was talking to him about it, it wasn't necessarily working all the time. And he was like, hey, like you need to learn how to be obedient to me and what my laws are. And, and that was like a game changer for me. Like that was really new because I had never like really wanted to follow orders or, and, and I don't think that uh, what we believe in is orders at all. I don't think that God is a killjoy or anything like that. He gives us these laws because they protect us and, and we are his, his daughters and his son and his family. And now as I like literally abide in these laws, my life has been so much more fulfilled than anything I ever had before. And I don't even know how to explain that in a better way, but he has just brought so much peace where I hear him all day. He speaks to me all day and it's a loving presence. I'm never seeking for like more and more information. He's just, he's just providing it to me when I need. And the Holy Spirit is residing inside me. So as he resides inside me and I'm asking to be convicted, I'm asking for more understanding on something, he gives it to me. It's, and it's beautiful. It's not like, it's not like I have to reframe my mindset. That was something that I had to do a lot in the new age is I had to work on my own brain and I had to restructure my own thoughts. And it was by my own ability of things that were happening inside my life, if that makes sense. Um, with, with Jesus, it's not necessarily me working. It's him working through me and changing everything. And that's what's really beautiful is, yeah, I can, I can try to be a better person. But it's, it's not me being the better person. It's Christ through me. And that 
has been a huge game changer. Before it was spirits through me, and now it just like any demonic spirit through me. Now it's the Holy Spirit through me, the one and only spirit that should be <laughs> activating and guiding your steps. Amen. <laughs> oh, that's so amazing. And I just, you know, that's so, that's so powerful and profound. Like a lot of people don't understand what spirits are driving behind them and, and what are you being influenced by, by these demonic spirits and, and knowing that when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, truly believing in him, that he will send down his helper, which is the Holy Spirit. And there is no spirit like him. He is amazing. Like literally lights you up like just i don't know you're just on fire <laughs> and just lighting up and it's just he is truly amazing and he will guide you and he will minister to you and that's what Bree's trying to also say too i just want to like put that out there like when you when you re when you hear from the lord you're literally hearing from the holy spirit yes um, and he ministers to you and and the way that i know it's his voice is that we know because of the word of god right mm -hmm. we know the word so a lot of times verses will come up and, and and we will hear like very encouraging things that we need at that moment um so yeah god is good he he knows how to connect with us and meet us where we're at and continue to help us to grow and mature um so that's the beautiful part and i just love that you said that wow wow <laughs> praise god so now that you come to the lord and you're like all right jesus i know you're real i can't hide that no more you give me peace that surpasses like literally all understanding i'm filled with your holy spirit now what where is brie now like tell me about that yeah so right now i'm actually sharing a lot about um testimonies with people who are uh fighting uh, from their pornography addiction um because that was something that was huge for me before christ is i had a really big pornography addiction and i was also um very deep into tantra as i'm sure some of you on the other end uh, know about that as well and i've learned that sex is sacred inside of marriage only and it can it's only inside the container and i'm learning that everything on the outside is a complete counterfeit of what god wanted to, he did create what he did create and so i'm sharing about all that stuff on uh my instagram i'm just uh interviewing other people about like how they got out of it and uh with christ and because i know for me like where i'm at now it's been about so i've been a believer for four years now but it wasn't until this last year that god completely delivered me from my pornography addiction and that's what i like to help people understand is like there are going to be a lot of things that do get delivered uh when you become a believer but there are some things that might be your cross to bear and he he will deliver you from it but you should still share that testimony with other people to let you know like to let them know like hey they're not alone and we're going to get through this you know and so that's kind of what i've been doing is sharing with them like hey there's no condemnation you can do this with christ like christ is your strength um, and that has been like really huge. And then I kind of just share about relationships in general because I just love talking about relationships. <laughs> um, relationships with God specifically. Um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been really awesome. That's amazing. And you know, um, what, what Bree's saying too, I just want to like kind of talk about like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Um, sorry, my mind just went a little okay. <laughs> somewhere else right now. Oh man. Um, but yeah, so besides that, I'm just going to say, where can we find you? Like if people wanted to search you out to seek you, maybe they want to get interviewed, maybe they want to um, follow you and watch your content. Can you give us some? Yeah. Ideas? Yeah. So, uh, Instagram is Brie Marie Adkins. And then my YouTube channel is Christ Curls and Conversations. And yeah, you can find me on Facebook as well at Brie Marie Adkins. And and I'll put her link, I'll put all her links below into the, especially if you're watching you guys on YouTube, I'll put it below so that you guys can see it. Um, but man, we just want to say that Jesus is real. He's alive. He's amazing. And it's, and once you get to like literally seek him out and, and, and really just call upon the name, he says, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. um, you will have 
the most supernatural encounter because he is a god of spirit and he says my true worshipers will worship me in spirit and in truth but in order to really worship him in that place we have to receive his holy spirit so jesus is the way he's the he's the way of the truth and the life and no one can come to god the father except through him so he is the he is the way to uh god that everyone's searching for um and i think that you know another thing is is that you know when we truly want to seek for the lord to, to to give him the reins and control over our lives because we don't know we didn't create ourselves the maker creator created us so just like a creator would know his creation very well because he put it all together he knows the best routes and ways for us to live a fulfilling and truly just amazing life and, and god knows so we must allow him to take over and you know just be our god so it's just so amazing to know that you know we could all have a personal relationship with you so thank you so much Bree. i love your testimony i hope everybody who's watching this really just receives his word and seeks for jesus on their own like just really give him a call, call it out call out his name get to know him personally you'll you won't you won't regret it truly <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy that you're doing this and it's, it's just helping so many people. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.